Welcome back to another episode of Ruben's Idiot Kitchen. This week we got a special episode sponsored by our good friends at Jepson's Malore. And don't call it a comeback. Got my man Brian Walsh here today. Brian is super excited about Malord because it's it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. I'm excited. I love Malord. I love can't... cooking with Malord. I love drinking Malord. And I am Malord. He is Malord. I am so Malord. we're going to start off the episode with just a little taste of our good friends here at Jepson's Malort. If you guys don't know about Jepson's Malort, you're gonna know about it by the end of this episode. Cheers. He has Captain America and I have Iron Man. Because we're little kids. So, when I was trying to figure out about making something with Malort, it's super bitter. It has grapefruit and wormwood flavors in there. It is, let's be honest, Brian, it's, it's not the best tasting. It's thing not, it's one of them. It's very bitter, joking. very bitter. So I employed Bartender extraordinaire, Brian Appreciate Walt, that. Thank you. make a beautiful cocktail with it. Oof. I'm going to make you some curry with it. And guys, I'll be honest with you, this curry is so warming and it's delicious. I've heard about it. So I'm going to start with this first. So the first thing we need is our curry base. So I have our blender here all set up. And just like in season one, when I showed you guys how to make the curry base, this one is going to start off raw, though. That's the difference. And you can use this curry base. You can freeze it. You can use it for whatever you want. I'm gonna put half an onion in there. I took a can of coconut milk and I separated the cream from the water and I'm gonna use the water to blend up our paste. I'm gonna throw a couple tablespoons of ginger garlic paste in it, our good old friend ginger garlic paste. If you want, if you have ginger and you have garlic, you can use six cloves of garlic or like an inch, like a thumb piece size of ginger. That would work well. And I'm gonna throw some spices in it, get our a little fancy painter's yeah. palette here. So I'm gonna throw just some garam masala in here, a little bit of curry powder in here, and some turmeric. And since this is, so this is gonna be a seafood curry, right? So I'm gonna add a couple of Asian ingredients that I really like to work with. This is not traditional at all, but I think it adds a lot to the flavor. This is a secret ingredient, crab paste. It tastes delicious. I spread this on just toast with butter. Uh, it is super delicious. I'm gonna throw a nice heaping spoonful in there, or maybe two, because I'm, I'm crazy. Why not? I'm gonna throw a little bit of tamarind extract in there, and then just a squeeze of agave. I love agave. And another secret Asian ingredient, since we're making a fish curry, you guys can totally omit these two ingredients, the two Asian ingredients. Just a little bit of fish sauce. Now, fish sauce stinks just like Malort, but it, I think it tastes a lot better than Malort. It, it, it can't taste worse than Malort. So, I'm gonna get this blending starting off on really slow. <clears throat> and then turn it up. And you're gonna wanna cook this till it's like super smooth. And while that's going, I'm gonna turn up our pan over here. I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of mustard oil and get that heating up. There you go, you have your little curry paste. You don't have to be concerned if it's too liquidy because it's gonna cook out a lot in this. It'll reduce down, thicken up Yeah, a it'll bit. thicken up, a lot of that water will cook. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take some black mustard seeds and you're just gonna throw it right in here. And what it's gonna to start to do, is gonna to start to pop, you better watch out. You're gonna hear it start to pop. Oh yeah, Ooh, yeah. you hear that? You wanna watch out, because it, it is gonna go crazy on you. So go once crazy. that just starts to pop, my mom used to call it spluttering the spices. Spluttering. I'm gonna add our curry paste just to it. And we're gonna cook that down. And while that's cooking down, I turned it up all the way, so it's gonna start to just cook and cook and cook. You can already kinda smell all the yeah, spices, so. right? This one's good. So to add to this, I took the other half of that onion and I thinly sliced it. I have three medium-sized tomatoes, small tomatoes, just cut into chunks. And I have just a couple of serranos. I did de-seed them because, uh, you know, as my for mom- me? Was to, that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As my mom used to call it, uh, she would call it uh, making it, making it white, white people spicy. <laughs> so that was for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. just for you, buddy. So I'm gonna add our serranos to this and our onions and just let that cook down. Mm. 
Are you going to cook it down so the onions are translucent? Or yeah, just, so I'm going to cook it down just so the onions start to break down just a little bit. I don't want to add too much to this, though. Then I'm also going to add just a squeeze of tomato paste. Now, if you're not getting tomato paste in your tubes, you're messing up big time. How because, or are you getting a can? <laughs> yeah, because if you get a can, you only use like what, like a spoonful? Yeah, and you have to throw and it away. You have, to, you have to wrap it up or yeah. throw it away. If you get it in the tube, you can throw your cap on and you can use it whenever you want. So it's a little pro tip for you. It's like toothpaste. Don't get that in a can either. <laughs> no, yeah. Get can you imagine if you have to get a whole can of toothpaste? <laughs> All right, so this is going to start sticking a little bit, and that's okay. You want to cook out some of that liquid. It smells good, man. Yeah, it's already starting to smell good. So you decided to do a cocktail. Well, you didn't decide. I, I didn't decide. I did not decide. There was not an option. I literally gave him two days ago, and I was like, figure out something to do with this. Yeah. And I absolutely love this drink. So my first experience with Jepson's Malort, two years ago I went to Chicago to visit a buddy right after New Year's Eve, and he's like, you got to have a Chicago handshake. What's well, a Chicago handshake? Chicago handshake uh, is the Chicago version of a boiler maker, mm -hmm. or as we call it in the East Coast, a state uh, a, a city citywide. Wide, citywide. So it's a shot of Malort and a beer, which is usually an mm -hmm. old style beer. That's PBR. what it's called. And uh, you take the shot, and then you chase it with the beer, and you it's need, terrible. You need, you need a lot to chase. It's with terrible. This we shot. had a friend that said it tasted like earwax, which is fine. Earwax, uh, yes. <laughs> Um, gasoline. Gasoline. I've gotten battery acid. I was told you could start a fire with it. Yeah, um, you could. It's something. Oh my goodness, it's starting to smell so good. So, how do you decide to counteract so, that super bitterness in there? It's super bitter. Um, I try to find some stuff. Obviously, you need sweetness with there, but you can't just add sweetness to something. It's going to take like, taste like lemonade. Um, so, it was a few tries. I think I had. I think this was drink five or six that I decided to make. Um, this one, we decided to help from a friend. Uh, my girl Veronica, I work with at Scana, see her on Friday and Saturday nights at the Scana bar. Um, Cheap it's plug. called Vodum Alert. Ooh, <laughs> 10 points to Vodum Griffin Alert. Door. It's a little, so, little, little Harry Potter reference for all you Harry Potter nerds out there. We are gonna start out, we'll start out with Malort just to stop talking about it. <laughs> So we're gonna do. Um, we're actually gonna do one and one and a half ounces, 1.5 ounces of uh, Malort. Put that right back there. Um, I wrestled around with doing um, some kind of botanical gin. Um, my favorite is Blue Coat. Um, it's from Philadelphia. I use it for most every local gin boys. cocktail I make. It's very local. Um, try use for everything. It's very good. Um, they also make a barrel aged gin, which is very tasty as well. That down. That was also one ounce as well, so or 1.5. So we're doing 1.5, 1.5. I'm doing a Saint Germain. Um, Saint Germain is a very interesting liqueur to use. Um, it's usually used for mixing. It's never straight. Um, I would call it salt and pepper as a bartender. If you have a drink that needs a little bit of this or a little bit of that, you can always use Saint Germain, depending on what it is. What's the uh, flavor profile of that? So the flavor is. Um, it's lemon, it has some like juniper to it. Um, the reason I picked it specifically, I thought about some other stuff, it goes really well with blue coat. You could honestly have these two with like a little fresh squeeze of lemon and put it on ice and it'd be delicious. Nice. Absolutely delicious. Um, definitely a porch pounder you could have um, in summertime. So with that, we are gonna do some fresh squeezed lemon juice. We squeezed this earlier. We're gonna do one ounce of lemon. Go ahead and add it in. So the simple syrup, that was the kicker. That was what kind of adds to the drink. In this syrup itself, it's 50-50 uh, uh, water to sugar. I also had um, some local organic blackberries. We had some sage, um, some whole peppercorns, and then I cut it with Ooh. a little bit of white vinegar. Um, usually I don't cut syrup with vinegar, so I, I guess it's not considered a simple syrup. Um, yeah, taste it. Yeah, please. I uh, added, I didn't add the black pepper or the um, peppercorns before. I think it just needed a little bit more. The sage was it's kind really of abundant. It is, it is very it's good. It's not super sweet either. It's not that sweet. It's not that sweet. I wanted, because uh, sometimes it's a little too sweet. You can't actually taste what you put into it. Like the sage, blackberries, the peppercorns, you can't really taste that. It kind of just overpowers. Yeah. I'm a big fan of sage. And it's also a really pretty color. Put that back, and also, since I was, I was here last time, you know I love putting egg whites in cocktails. Yes. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. It wasn't part of it, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. And you guys can see our curry starting to thicken up just a little bit. See how that's all almost nice and thick? So at this point, I'm gonna add our tomatoes just cubed up in there and just let that kind of cook down for a couple minutes. You don't want it to break down too much, so about two minutes, and then I'll start adding, then I'll start adding our seafood to it. So, 
talking more about Malort, right? Mm -hmm. So Malort was come over here from, uh, I believe, Sweden, right? And what happened was it was right around Prohibition time. So <laughs> when the guy, when, when that, Carl that Jensen right. came over, right, he brought it over, and it was right in the time of Prohibition. It's a true story. At least I think that it probably is. tasted good during Prohibition. So compared, what they thought the customs thought it was medicine, which, to be perfectly honest, when my stomach isn't feeling too good, it's medicinal. I'll definitely take a shot That's of it medicinal. and like calm my stomach. Yeah, down. it kind of has that fernet kind of. Yeah, kind of, so a little bit more bitter, but I make the bottom. joke, but it's absolutely true. Ever since I've had Malort for the first time, uh, it's probably the liqueur I've drank most of my entire life, and that's only two years. You've been talking about it for like four months. I know it's crazy. <laughs> I I try to turn everybody to me, I can that I meet into drinking Malort because I think what I think of when I think of Malort is I tell people I'm like, you know, when you watch like. You know when you watch like a pirate movie or like you know you watch like an old time movie, they're like it'll cure what ails you. Mm -hmm. That's what I think that tastes like. Like it is, you drink it, and you're like, oh wow, this is like an elixir. This is so good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So our tomatoes have cooked down just a little bit. I'm gonna add our mahi mahi, or if you're trying to watch your weight, just one mahi. <laughs> Brian loves that joke. It's. I'm just kidding. It's literally called mahi mahi. It's a joke from this movie called The House Bunny. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's a very good movie. Super underrated actress. Can we talk about that for a second? Let's talk about my drink more. Okay, let's, we'll talk about your drink more. So I'm gonna <laughs> let this cook down a little bit. So this is you. The great right. thing about this curry is it's like, it's really quick because seafood doesn't take too long yeah, to cook. Just through. a few minutes. Cook through the shrimp. So I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. Grab your rice. And I'm gonna cover up, and you can go ahead and talk more about cool. your delicious beverage. So. Cool. Read Voldemort. So, Voldemort. Voldemort. So tell me again what's in it. Blackberry syrup, egg white. So we have, yes, we have lemon, fresh squeezed lemon, the blackberry sage syrup. We have the blue coat gin. We have the Voldemort. Uh, mm. We have Saint Germain. Um, and then we add a little egg white as well. So when you add egg white to a cocktail, um, typically what you want to do is you want to shake without ice first. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Um, the main reason is when you're shaking up the um, egg itself. If it's cold, it doesn't tend to like emulsify and actually like um, form that milkshake cons consistency you want. Um, the ice kind of just keeps it together and doesn't let it just expand within within the liquid itself. So you do want to shake it, not for too long, about 10 seconds just to get it going. We're going to add a little bit of ice. I like adding ice for most to the very top until I can't actually put any more ice in. Yeah, we had uh, Chad who also did some bartending. He said you have to shake it until your hand is numb. Is that true? Sometimes I do that, um, depending on what the cocktail is. Yeah, Espresso martinis, absolutely. Um, other stuff, not so much. Not so much. I'm a big fan of being espresso martini. I, I'm so surprised that that makes such a big comeback. Espresso martini has made a comeback. The funny part is, everyone makes it different. Yeah, it is. It's I mean, I know there's some places down the beach that make it with um, like rum. It's typically with uh, vodka, vanilla vodka. Some people use. I mean, you, you can also use anything. When you want you mix it with Kahlua and Frangelica, Bailey's, cream, whatever you want to do. So like the base espresso martini, it's usually the base espresso. Is, it's usually fresh made espresso, um, vodka, and then there's four or five different liqueurs, creme de cacao, Frangelica, Kahlua, um, Bailey's. There's multiple things people use. Everyone does stuff different. Um, I, however, am cream free with that. I like to do Kahlua, Frangelica, espresso. Oh, you started adding an egg white to it. You I do. I do add egg whites to it. Yeah. I do like to add egg whites to it. I do. He likes to be healthy. He likes to start his day off. Is that what it is? White. Healthy. I think so. Let's just call it that. Oh my gosh, it's just smelling so good. So I made this curry just to test out. I do a lot of testing of the recipes, uh, and I made this during a snowstorm. This curry. And I was like, you know, let me just try a little bit of Malort in here because I was trying to figure out a, a recipe that I felt like the bitterness and the acid from the grapefruit were kind of come through well. Mm -hmm. And so this this particular curry is called a Goan seafood curry from from the area of India called Goa, and it's very like spice forward. It's very, um, you know, it's just super fresh with the seafood and everything in there. And during the snowstorm, it was like the perfect thing. It smells really good. Yeah. Even with the top on, it good. Yeah, so remember I told you that I split the cream from the uh, from the water, from yeah. the coconut? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to actually finish it with the cream so it just kind of thickens up the yeah, whole thing. Um, it just kind of adds a really good velvetiness to our curry. Oh, my gosh, it smells so good. 
So a lot of people overcook their shrimp. So this is how I added it in there. I'm gonna try to lift it up just a little bit, right? And this is just gonna melt in and just kind of slowly cook. You can cook this on low so your seafood doesn't overcook. That's the biggest thing. You wanna make sure that your seafood is not overcooked. Just till the mahi-mahi, whatever fish you wanna use. You can use basa if you want. You can use salmon if you want. Um, any fish, salmon I wouldn't advise, but if you had it, it would totally work just because it's a little bit too oily. Yeah. Um, you wanna use like a white fish, I would say. So like basa, bass, I'm using mahi-mahi. Anything that's gonna flake really well would be a really great fish to use for this. Or you can just use shrimp if you want. For that reason to break apart. Yeah, to be a... just sort of flakes apart so it really covers your rice and everything. Um, you wanna what show you me how your drink looks? Absolutely. I'm also gonna add just some of our tomato puree right to here. I just kinda let that cook down. Now I'm gonna turn this up. That. And do a nice little uh, fresh sage garnish on there. Look at that, look at you. Also, Eat with your eyes first. I also wanna do a little black pepper just cause we added in the syrup. Look at that, that is a gorgeous drink. Do you think this will make an appearance on the Toscana menu? Do you think you think they would not go for the Malort? I think we could do that. No? <laughs> I think, I don't know if the Malort would work, but to be honest with you, this drink is delicious. I think if you had it, you would have no Listen, idea. You would a, have no idea. It's such a blue there. collar dish in my opinion, right? Like I think, I think Malort is exactly what I think of like old miners drinking. Yeah. So as with anything seafood, in my opinion, I think you always need to have acid. So I always have limes on hand, and I'm also gonna finish it with just a nice handful of cilantro, because I think everything is better with cilantro. I've said it before on the Everyone show. Everyone knows I love cilantro. Well, I think, I feel bad for those people that have the soap gene. And I've talked about that before on the show, where there's literally a gene where people what have. What if I had that soap gene? You didn't even ask me. I didn't. What if I had I just, that gene? You were gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> You're gonna have to deal with it. I dated a girl that had the soap gene, and I was like, How'd that not, work out? I'm not changing anything I eat for you. How'd that go? You just can't eat what I eat. <laughs> or you have to deal with something tasting like your your Dove soap bar. Oh. Yeah, look at that. It's definitely coming together. It smells good, man. Dude, it's such a good curry. Um, when I made this for my friend, I uh, I brought him over, and he doesn't eat a lot of spicy food. So like, I, I like do, my I, stuff. I honestly don't. I, I don't. I like my stuff crazy spicy, right? Like I like my stuff to the point where like, yeah, I'm aware. It hurts you. The yeah, next day. I'm aware. I, I I couldn't do that. You know that. <laughs> you know better than that. Like, it's crazy. So I'm gonna taste it. I think it might need a little bit more salt. You taste right, it. Yeah, go ahead. Ooh. I don't want you to taste it there for a second. Cut my hand off. So I think it needs salt, but I think the spice level is actually perfect. Yeah, that's not, that doesn't, that's good. I'm gonna throw, I, thought it was, I thought it was gonna knock my head off. That's, not, that's pretty good. A nice bit of salt in there, and just a little bit of pepper. That's really good, Ruben. Yeah, I think uh, one of the great things about this show that I've been able to kind of explore um, is kind of a little bit more of my heritage. I'm trying to do a lot more, uh, Classic dishes for you guys this this season around. I felt like last season I did a little bit more on the. Is this um, something that like your mom would make, your dad would make? Uh, you know what? Really. It kind so of derived like, from something they would yeah, make, so and then you kind of took it from that. That's cool. And my mom would make you know fish curries all the time, but this is kind of your twist on that. Yeah. So like, there's so many different places in India, though. Cool. Like, it's it's not just like oh one one place one curry. You know, it's not all India has yeah. one type of curry. And my mom always finished everything with cilantro, and I'm gonna give it a really good squeeze of lime. It's because again, I think lime juice and cilantro make everything better, which is why I like Mexican food so much. That looks really good. And you wanna grab a spoon? Let's see how Maybe. we did again. Do you have yours from last time? You know. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, it's way different. I think we. It's you know, fresh. Oh man. Yeah, everything is fresh. I mm -hmm. think it's gonna pair really well with the acidity and everything you have from there. That's really good. Um, I have some brown rice already cooked off, and a couple other things are gonna add to this dish that I brought from home. Um, I have mm. just some pickles that I made at home. Just some pickled onions and pickled uh, radish in there, and then I'm gonna just thinly slice some jalapeno. 
because I like myself a little bit spicier, like we already established. You said as long as you keep this on low, you can kind of let it simmer for a little bit without it yeah, I mean, seafood in the shrimp. And honestly, like with, with, with anything like stewy or like that has like a sauce like this, that it's always going to taste better the next day. Yeah. Always yeah. going to taste better the next the day. the flavors kind of marry together. The flavors all marry yeah. together. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this thing look super pretty and super professional like you work in a restaurant. So I'm going to grab a plate. And I actually have some brown basmati rice that I've had cooking off over here. Shout out to my rice cooker, man. I think you were talking thing, about it, talking about it earlier. I'm a, I'm a fan of this rice cooker. I used to not cook rice this way, but for a situation where you kind of just want to let it sit, it really does a great job of just cooking it and then keeping it at like the perfect temperature to cook this thing. And just let it sit here for a while, and it's like perfect basmati rice every single time. So I put a nice little pile of that in the middle. Let's grab a couple of these scrimps, little scrimpies. That's good. A couple pieces of fish. And the onions are in there. I like keeping the onions whole, like with the slices and everything. I think it just adds some different textures to this dish. I definitely got some of the onion flavor, I think, from the puree you made. But you yeah, also so get that, a little bit of that like again, actually texture you, from the from the slice onion you put into you it. You could as well. totally make this this without this, the fish and without the crab paste and everything in there. So to garnish this guy. I feel like I'm your assistant right now. Oh, you are. So to garnish this guy, I'm gonna put a couple of these slices of jalapeno right on here. Then we gotta taste your cocktail too, man. We do. Cause I am a, I'm, I'm jonesing. Cause anytime <laughs> you can put in the war. You know what I forgot? I forgot our main ingredient while we're here. Woo! Tis it on top. Just a little bit, just a little drizzle. That's all you need. Just a little bit. This will be without it, but I think you can taste the difference with it and without it now. It has, this has enough in it. I think we'll be all right. So this is without. And we're, as with anything, I think everything always looks better with a lime. And some fresh cilantro leaves, just right, torn right on top. And then we're gonna make another one. And we're gonna taste the difference here. So you tasted it before without the Malort. Try it with the Malort now. And you're gonna see it just adds just a little bit of extra. Oh, I know what it adds. <laughs> but I think it really works with this dish. Just a little bit of bitterness at the end. Nothing it does bitterness. It does. You guys don't have to add this malort at all into it, but I highly recommend it. So you wanna make another one of these guys? So we can, can make another one. Absolutely. So we can do a little uh, cute, cute little cheers. Yeah, absolutely. Just add your pickles right on top. Ooh. Babe. Oh man. Brian was letting everybody taste this Malort <laughs> at the bar the other day. I dropped off the bottle to him and I was I'm like, surprised hey. I didn't get in trouble for it. I had some people who weren't, they weren't too happy. <laughs> they were not too happy. Listen, it's 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 rough. I, I here's what I tell people. I think the first time you have it, it's terrible. But every single time you have it afterwards, it adds a little something extra. It does. It adds a little bit. You can you can lie you, you can lie to me and say you don't like it. It wasn't uh um, you know you like it. The only issue we're having with making the second drink here. I only have one cocktail glass. Well we can have another glass. Can we do that? I can grab glass right now. Thank you, my friend. This is going to be a martini glass, yeah. I think a martini glass will be good. It'll, it'll work. Martini glasses are pretty, but I really like coupe glasses. The coupe glasses? The coupe glasses. Ooh. Oh my gosh, look at you with the perfect pours. Oh. Put that on there. Hit it with the black pepper. Yes, sir. Should we just drink out of the at, at, at the same time? Should we just go down and sip it together? <laughs> sip that? Should we do it? Should we do it? You guys want to say it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? You're gonna get this, Brandon? Let's go. Are we doing this? Oh yeah, we're doing it. Get, get on the other side. Come on. Free, just for you guys. That's really good. You like that? That's really good. Let's. Good. I think it's gonna pair really well with that. I kind of want to get a. I would drink that all day, not just because I like Malor. Even if someone was like, "Yeah, try this." Good. Here, get a little piece of uh, get a little piece of mahi mahi in your curry. 
I can't believe you just made me do that with you. You're lucky I've been friends with you for like 14 years. Mm -hmm. You're very lucky. Man, this reminds me of my mom's curry. You know I'm not a seafood person. You know I did not know that. I'm not. But for you? Wow, it's really good. It's like I said, it's so warm. On a rainy day, just like it is today on the day that we're recording. I've got a bit of the mahi, the onion, and the tomato. It's a really well, well balanced curry. It's really good. I think it's super delicious. The pickles, I just did some. I always like to use rice vinegar. If you guys want to do an easy pickle, just rice vinegar, sugar, water, salt. I put some juniper berries in here, funny enough. Uh, some juniper and a little bit of allspice in here. Yeah, man, let's do a little. We don't have to do it together this time, man. Don't worry. It's up to you, Cheers, man. buddy. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. It's funny, the last time I had Brian on, I don't know if you guys know this, but his episode was live stream. It was live. He stream. had no idea. He literally walked in, and I was like, "Hey, man, how you doing? Good, good to see you. Thanks for coming. By the way, this is going to be live." And he just slowly <laughs> stopped, and he was like, "I honestly thought it was a joke at first. Thought it was I, a joke, and it was and not then a joke." The camera started, and I realized that was not a joke. But it was real. I think it was one of the most viewed videos for D T V. That's got, awesome, like, man. Twelve hundred awesome. views on, awesome. on Facebook. That's awesome. Thank you for coming back on again. Absolutely. I want Thanks you guys to me. try this curry, try this cocktail. If you guys can, can't find Malort, go to your local liquor store and ask them to order it. I go to my local liquor store and they literally order me a case at a time. If you can't find Malort, we'll have it. Come in Toscana, see Briner, Veronica. We'll make you this drink this week for the next couple weeks, we'll have it. Um, but come in while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. Or cold. Or cold. It's usually, actually, he's right. We do serve it cold. He's right. I don't think you ever want to drink warm malort. Just saying. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Brian, for coming back. You got on. it, buddy. Try this curry. Eat it. Love it. Be all about it.